Uh, well, the standard definition of money uh, is anything that serves as a generally accepted medium of exchange, which means you use it to pay for things. I actually wrote an entire article sort of analyzing what the words in those phrases mean. So a medium of exchange is something that you receive uh, not in order to consume it, to eat it, not in order to invest it. You don't plant it in your garden. It's something you acquire in order to trade it away later. So it's part of your trading plan that uh, you acquire this good because it will make it easier to trade later for what you want uh, to go home and consume or invest. And why would you do that? Because the good you come to market with uh, may be not very popular. You may have a hard time swapping it for something else that uh, you do want to consume. So people trade to get a more widely accepted commodity and they converge over time until some commodities are generally accepted, usually a small number, and it usually converges to one, which becomes the commonly accepted medium of exchange, and at that point it has become money. So money emerges out of barter as a way for people to achieve their goals more economically, more conveniently, uh, than searching around for the perfect, well-matched trading partner. Okay. And um, so, um, as you learned, I mean, in our world, money is in a way produced by central banks, by indirectly government-controlled banks, and um, sometimes we hear the expression of fiat money. Could you just explain in that case what the difference is between money and fiat money, if there is one? Okay. Um, well, the earliest money following the, the story I just told is some useful commodity, and historically it uh, converged on gold and silver. Uh, and gold and silver then were used as money themselves, and they were used as backing for bank-issued money. So for many purposes, it was more convenient to have a slip of paper than a pocket full of metal, uh, or to make a long-distance transfer by authorizing a bank to in some other place to transfer money on behalf of someone else. Uh, but those types of, of money issued by banks were backed by gold and silver. Uh, until governments nationalized the business of uh, issuing currency, uh, uh, nationalized often the clearing system uh, between banks, uh, and then they discovered that it was uh, cheaper to back money not with gold and silver, which are expensive and, and something has to be given to get them, but with something which was easier to acquire, namely nothing. <laughs> so when they took away the the option to redeem your money for something tangible, uh, then we have what's called fiat money, which the name comes from the Latin fiat, meaning let it be. It's just money based on a decree. So it's it's not backed by any commodity. Um, it just exists because of the government's decree that people should treat it as money. Uh, and the problem with that is when when money can be is not backed by anything, it can be conjured out of thin air, then you have the problem of too much money being printed for the benefit of those who do the printing but acting as a tax on those who receive the money, because it, it loses its value over time. Thanks. And um, so, so the, you explained already the dangers of it, but I mean, now we are in a time of a financial crisis, at least that's what we are um, here every day, and um, does this fiat money system have something to do with it? And uh, what is the general danger of this system? Yeah. This this kind of crisis is not the kind of crisis you would have, uh, not, not the kind of crisis, not what you could have had uh, under a system where money is being restrained by a uh, commodity. Uh, I think the crisis was developed during the period of the boom uh, by easy credit policy uh, conducted by the Federal Reserve System and other central banks. So they made uh, money cheaply available. They drove interest rates down very low. Uh, people were happy to borrow the money and invested in housing and other projects that looked like they would be profitable. Uh, but it turned out the investments were misguided because the artificially uh, low interest rate couldn't be maintained permanently. Uh, it had to rise to accurately reflect the scarcity of genuine savings in the economy and uh, 
we find that there was a, a big cluster of error in uh, investing in real estate and in derivatives uh, based on real estate. So this was not a crisis uh, of the market. This is a crisis of fiat money and of uh, central banking and intervention into the market. And uh, currently, governments of all major countries are busy trying to find solutions to get out of this crisis and to prevent a similar crisis in the future. So, um, knowing that governments can pass kind of any law they want in the belief that they now do something, achieve something for the greater good, what would you recommend? What is, from your opinion, the right thing to do in the current situation? Uh, well, the wrong thing to do is to sow the seeds of a future crisis by trying to inflate our way out of this crisis. Uh, I mean, the reason we had the crisis in 2007, 2008 was that we tried to inflate our way out of the burst of the last uh, bubble, the, the dot-com bubble in 2001. So we don't want to go through that cycle again. Uh, what I think we should do is determine which banks and other financial firms are solvent Uh, and which ones are insolvent and do something to close the institutions that are insolvent. We can do that without making the financial system collapse uh, by maintaining uh, the quantity of, of spending in the economy. To do that, we don't need to preserve any particular institutions. But for the sake of providing real discipline to financial markets, there has to be a fear of failure. We can't treat everyone as too big to fail. We can't bail everyone out. So the losses have already been incurred. The question is whether taxpayers are going to bear them through continually injecting funds into insolvent firms uh, or whether we're going to resolve the situation now and make a clean start of it, um, impose the losses that have already been incurred on shareholders and on bondholders, uh, let the, the solvent financial institutions pick up the slack. I mean, we should be turning a bigger share of the, or we should allow a bigger share of the market to go to the well-run institutions. Uh, we shouldn't be trying to preserve poorly run institutions. So, and one last question, because we hear um, in the last few months more and more the idea of a currency backed by gold, so-called gold standard. So, first, what do you think about it? And uh, as a second, as a part of it, how realistic do you think are these demands to introduce a currency backed by gold? Uh, well, ideally, I'm all in favor of a currency backed by gold. I think that's what the market produced when we let it, and we were wrenched away from that by... Uh, intervention uh, by, you know, restrictions on freedom of people to make the kind of contracts they want to make. Uh, now, returning to gold is difficult. I, I don't think there's a magic formula, and uh, the, the groundwork needs to be prepared for it, but uh, it can be done if we uh, muster the political will for it. Some of the talk about uh, returning to a, a monetary role for gold, I have heard, though, uh, comes from like the Chinese central bank suggesting that the IMF ought to create a new basket of currencies, uh, one small element of which could be gold, and reintroducing it through that kind of sort of global political uh, structure seems to me the worst way to go about it. I think it'll be much healthier if it sort of wells up from the, from the bottom From the, from the users of money. Um, so the most important thing is to give people the freedom to use whatever kind of money they want to use and let, let the sounder money drive out the weaker money. So allow me just uh, a follow-up question to this because people talk about global financial institution and in particular in Europe people are usually fond of global solutions uh, close to world government. So Where do you see the solution to this uh, current crisis if we talk about the uh, global financial uh, solution and um, uh, in particular uh, under a special guidance of, uh, of the UN governed council? Uh, markets are very complex. Uh, they involve millions of people who have millions of ideas, some very clever, some not so clever. And it's a large proving ground to weed out the good ideas from the bad ideas. Uh, 
it's not something, I mean, and the result is, is a sort of beautiful meshing of plans that no intelligent committee could have come up with. And if we turn over uh, control of the entire global economy to a committee of wise men, we're going to make a mess of it. I mean, that was the lesson I think we learned from uh, the experience with central planned economies before the Berlin Wall fell. So I don't think we want to uh, learn that all over again. Uh, the, the more interconnected the, more, the, the global economy is, the more complex it is, the more we need uh, the market to guide the allocation of resources, including financial resources. Barry, thank you very much for your answers. Thank, thank you. you.